Hi, I'm Jay Ligaya, and I'm a drama lecturer here at Excelsior College. This masterclass series is your introduction to Excelsior College's Bachelor of Dramatic Arts degree. These lessons are designed to give you a little taste of the amazing adventures that lie ahead of you here at Excelsior College. Today's lesson is called Performance. The definition of performance is an act of presenting a play, concert, or other forms of entertainment. Here at Excelsior College, you will have the opportunity to experience a wide range of performance-based classes and activities, from movement classes to voice work, technique-orientated classes, personal development classes, puppetry, poetry, a plethora of passionate pursuits that will have you wondering if this is really work, monologues and duologues. Today, I will be highlighting a small part of our dramatic arts program here at Excelsior College. Question, when you hear that you have to memorize dialogue for a scene or an assessment, how do you feel? Scared? Intimidated? I'll let you in on the secret. It doesn't matter how many years you work in this industry, you are always intimidated by a new script, so not to worry. Today we are going to give you some tips and tricks to not only memorize scripts, but also to perform them as well. If you can memorize the lyrics to an entire song, you can memorize Shakespeare. The longer you study, the more you realize everyone discovers their own techniques that best work for them. We give you the tools and you discover which is the one that best fits your hand. Here are some of the ways that you might be able to do it. Excelsior has told me lots of different techniques. I think the one that stuck with me is just writing it out thousands and thousands of times and repeating and repeating. Um, I used to write it out on gigantic butcher's paper and stick it up on my bedroom wall and um, in the shower I would stick it on the outside so I could just be in the shower washing my hair and saying my lines but yeah. So when I'm memorizing scripts I rewrite them um, and it somehow sinks into my head when I rewrite them. The one that I think has the fastest results is saying a thought to like a, something in my room like a calendar maybe and saying that thought and associating that thought with that object and then for the next thought finding a new object. So then when you forget you can go back to the first object, look at it and then remember what thought is associated with it. And I think that's just a good way um, of solidifying your lines and being able to join the thoughts together because you're able to have a visual cue for them kind of thing. Sometimes I, I write them out. Uh, a lot of times the weirdest thing that I do is I'll record the other people's lines and leave gaps for me and then I have to try and fill in the gaps and sometimes I don't leave enough space so I have to just like pace up my lines to make them fit. When memorizing scripts for me I will read it over but I will visualize it and visualize the line and rather than just seeing it as a line I process it as a thought so I think of the lines as thoughts and then find a through line within the script so the one the line before sparks the next one and then that way it can create a flow and then also just doing it over and over and over and over again. So even if it's just walking around a circle and moving my hands while I'm talking I find that it goes into my body and I learn it. Um, I use breathing techniques believe it or not to <laughs> memorize. I find if I'm breathing it then it comes out naturally and to be honest, taking a break from learning the lines is the best way for me. I will go for a walk, you know, have a nap, have a shower, whatever it is, and I find that the next day it sticks. I'm a visual learner, so it's hard for me to just look at text and go, yep, I totally remember that. So I have to break my entire script down with pictures for each sentence, and I need to get something that's really visually stimulating for me and you can add actions to that, you can add intentions, and there's so much that I put into the script into the script that just eventually it becomes alive and physicalizing it with Laban efforts and flick and um, dab and stuff like that. So just getting it up on its feet is really important. See, everyone has a different way of doing things and you may have a similar or different approach to learning monologues. Okay, let's have a look at some different styles of monologues. You've always got to let the last man go. It's honourable. He's the last man out of the bag. 
the warrior, the last samurai man. You've got to take a second sometimes to wonder, how did this little Eminem do it? Hey, hey, hey! Sonny and my dad always used to say that when I grew older, I'd understand. Well, I finally did. And I learned a lot from those two men. I learned how to give love and get love unconditionally. You just got to love the person for what they are. And I learned the greatest secret of them all. The saddest thing in life is wasted talent. The hardest bit of this is the beginning. The rest is easy. That's the hardest bit. So what you need to do is project yourself going through that beginning bit. All right, once you, once you nail that beginning bit, all right, and how, uh, your first line is? Sonny and Dad. Sonny and Dad, right? Because I'm outside. I'm going to beat the traffic. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, so, you know, and if you have to add something to the beginning, to whoa, 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 whoa. Sonny and my dad used to think, you know, yeah, right. all right, but keep it going. Keep that character going. Because at the moment, you, you know, every now and again you drop out of it because you, you're unsure. Don't be. Yeah because you're making all the right decisions. Come here. That I learned that, right? Slow yourself down. But if you ask anybody from the neighborhood, they'll just say, that's another Bronx tale. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's, a, that's a suggestion and, and a tip that I would, I would say to anybody, is that don't, just because I put two dots on the ground, this is where I want you to be. If I feel like I need to move, then say I feel like the character needs to move. Otherwise, you'll, you'll restrict it. There are some rules to live by, Henry, for all of us. This is the nature of our very existence. It shows discipline of character when we do not colour outside the lines. We must focus. We must articulate when we speak and we must remain well-mannered individuals. Hey, Mum. Uh, do you need something? No, I, I don't need anything at all. Well. Just one tiny, teeny, little, <laughs> insignificant, totally no big deal favour. When I was young, I asked my priest how you could still get to heaven while protecting yourself from all the evil in this world. He told me what God had told his children. You are sheep among wolves. Be as wise as serpents, yet innocent as doves. I want you to pull out all of that, because at the moment what you're doing is you're acting. Mm -hmm. Don't, mm -hmm. all right? Pull it all out, because you are weather beaten. You know, I look for people who have fallen. If you think, if you think your character is a Blade Runner, I look for people who have fallen through the cracks. That's my job, you know? This city, and when you talk about this street, that's a new thought again. You know, this street, this street, you know, it always helps to know where they, they come from. So from your point of view, it's that thing, and find the pace in it. So bring the pace back up into it, because I've got this now, well, what, what I want now is somebody who has done this their entire lives. I know where they live. I know what they do, yeah. you know? And we you know one time I asked my priest, so it's this thing of going, make your character older, make your character 35, 40, seeing the world, seeing the worst of, of humankind, all right? And what you're doing is your wrap up. This is your wrap up. The city can be hard. You know, when I was young, I, Ask my priest how you could get to heaven while still protecting yourself from all the evils in this world. And he told me what God had told to his children. You are sheep among wolves. Be wise as serpents, yet innocent as doves. Love it. Okay. That's a, how'd you feel? That was a different take altogether, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it just felt like I, I believed everything I was saying. I think that makes a, a big difference. Instead of 
wanting for a line to sound a particular way because I want a thought to be um, projected, just letting the words be and letting the character kind of say what they're feeling is, is kind of much better. I think the, the, the problem that we sometimes fall into when doing monologues is that we forget that the words are actually going to benefit us. The words are actually the vehicles in which we travel and which we tell our stories. And we think that we need to add rims to this vehicle and we need to add wings to this vehicle when really it's sufficient enough to, t to take us from A to B. All we have to do is to allow it to. And we're the, we're the vessels that will tell these stories. And that's the great thing about choosing a really good monologue because then all you have to do is see what's there and allow it to allow you to tell the story. And the, the versions that you gave us, those two different versions, were night and day, you know. And also, one was an innocent young lady. The other one was a, a street-hardened veteran who's seen it all. So, I mean, I, I think that's the lovely thing about going when anybody gives you critique about your performance, it's not, they're not saying, and we as actors, we always go, what you're saying is that I'm terrible. No, I want a different view of your window. I want you to try it differently. I want you to give me a different angle, you know. And for us, that, that, uh, that last line that you were saying about doves, and for us, we need to be open. We need to be innocent as doves. We need to be open to go, okay, I'll give you another go at this. Instead of going, all oh, right, you mean I suck. No. So that's great. Now let's look at a scene with two people in it, a dual log or dialogue scene. Talk me through how it starts. I've already told you. I need details, you're being vague. You're exhausting. You promised you'd help me. I know, but you left out the fact that this would be a two day interview. I thought it was going to last only a few hours at best. Nope, now walk me through your process. You're a pain in the ass. Okay. There's this crashing in my ears. Is that when you make contact? I believe I do. Does it work every time? Always. And how did you discover this kind of communication? What you're good at is you use your hands and stuff. Mm. What you have to fight is using your hands and stuff. Excellent. All right, okay, you've got to, you've got to fight against that. And what you also need to do is, if you don't see that child walking and, and crying, we won't see that child. Okay. And at the moment, I don't see him because you're giving a great performance, but all it is is a great performance. What you need to do is see the child, because what that does is it it will dictate the, the beats that you choose, the pace that you choose. Can I just say no to your kind request and leave it at that? Y yes. I, I, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, you know. Uh, I'll just be off then. It's nice to see you. The truth is... With you, I'm in real danger. Uh, it seems like a perfect situation, uh, apart from that foul temper of yours. <laughs> um, but my relatively inexperienced heart would, I fear, not recover if I was once again cast aside, which I would absolutely expect to be. There are too many pictures of you everywhere, too many films. You, you would go, and I would be, well, bugged, basically. I see. <laughs> You're out, the reality's a real no, isn't it? I live in Notting Hill. You live in Beverly Hills. Everyone in the world knows who you are. My mother can hardly remember my name. That's fine. That's cool. It's a good decision. The fame's not really real, you know? Don't forget, I'm also a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Bye.
from an emotional standpoint, what were your decisions? How were you finding each of the lines? Because from watching it, you know, it it read a lot better. It it mm. felt like it was a scene of two people trying to just struggle to say I love you, and then in the end, going no. Mm. You know, mm. how did you feel as far as your character was concerned? Yeah, I felt like there was a lot more ambivalence in the sense that, um, like I felt the love and but was like there was a block of my thoughts mm. but I, I I really felt like I wanted to say yes mm. um, in that time and and I think the thing is, is that what you have to do is especially with characters like this always think in your head that I'm winning that this is a good decision for me because mm. if you play the character like oh poor you know I'm a victim then it's always going to look like you're acquiescing to something worse than it really is for you it's like you know what you know in the past I've been in situ and I expect that this is going to happen to me again, you know, and you use humor to deflect the fact that yeah. you think you're a loser when you're really not, you know, uh, but at the end of the day, it's that thing of going, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to say no, because I'm trying to justify why I'm saying no to you, mm -hmm. um, when I should be saying yes, mm -hmm. but I've been hurt in the past, and I just, um, you know, look, I don't think that my heart can handle that, which, yeah. you know, when you say that, everyone goes, oh... But for you, it's a matter of fact. It's, it's, it's your logical side going, you know, uh, calculate this relationship. Will it work? No, you'll probably get hurt. Look at, you know, everyone knows her. She's Hollywood. You know, she's Beverly Hills. You're Notting Hill. It's not going to work. And from you, it's like, oh, um. And it should immediately go to the little girl who dreamt of falling in love with Prince Charming. Mm. And that's where it should go to. Because from an audience point of view, our job is to endow them with the emotions that they look at and, and they endow. So it's from a, from a scene point of view, we endow the audience with 80% of this scene. Now, they may not have been in the situation, but they may have not. My uncle was like that. He was in a relationship with a famous lady or a lady or a famous man or whatever. So they can relate to it or they can relate to unrequited love. Right, and for you, it's always that thing of going. When you go into scenes, if you don't invest yourself a hundred percent, you won't know what's in the room. Mm. You know, you won't know how far to push the room. You'll sit there and go, "Oh, oh, look behind!" You know, it's that thing of just like this going, "Oh my, oh my gosh, there's a big, huge room behind here." I didn't know that. And it's the same with the scene. If you don't push the scene right to the edge, and go, "That was too far." If you don't know it was too far, then you don't know how far to push it. And that's not to say that that's how far you're going to be. But, you know, in some cases, you know, Jim Carrey is a great example where he'll push a scene to the right to the end to go, that was too much, wasn't it? Yeah. But now you know. Yeah. Whereas if you don't, you don't know that there's another room behind here. And so you're doing small acting in here instead of doing big, grand acting right throughout the room. And that's the same with this scene. If you don't love in this scene and fear losing in this scene because we're busy just trying to look good in this scene, then A, I'm not going to watch the scene from an audience point of view because it, it doesn't relate to me. Mm. Whereas if I want you two to fall in love and you don't, I'm going to go, oh, maybe if I keep watching this, something's going to happen and they're going to fall in love at the end, mm. which in the Hollywood terms it normally does. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So there you have it. A small window into the world that is performing arts here at Excelsior College. I look forward to seeing you all Class dismissed. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Excelsior Masterclass. Now, if you like what you've seen and you want to start your journey by studying drama here at Excelsior College, follow the link below to apply for an audition and become part of the Excelsior community.